नमस्कार एंड गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू सी सी गुरुकुल लेक्चर्स आई एम डॉक्टर कुमार शांतनु फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी देशबंधु कॉलेज वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग इन आर सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन आर्किगोनियस अबाउट वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ फिनेरिया एंड इट्स फिजियोलॉजी वी हैव सीन मॉर्फोलॉजी ऑफ फिनेरिया वी हैव आल्सो डिस्कस्ड anatomy of various structures of phenaria we will continue our discussion of about uh, the reproduction of uh, phenaria uh, sex organs in case of phenaria as we have discussed uh, earlier the reproduction can take place through two modes that is vegetative mode as well as sexual mode of reproduction the vegetative mode of reproduction as we have earlier discussed and seen in a very uh, elaborate way can take place by the help of fragmentation of protonema with the help of formation of secondary protonema by the formation of gemma in some shoots by the formation of bulbils and also sometimes with the help of apospore so now let us discuss the sexual reprodu uh, sexual reproductive aspect of phenaria life cycle the sexual reproduction takes place by the formation of male and female reproductive structures called as antheridia and archegonia respectively these reproductive structures develop in terminal clusters on leafy gametophores and they develop in a acrocarpus fashion they project from the surface of the plant phenaria is mostly monoecious with an exception of one or two species and they are autoecious as male and female sex organs develop on separate branches of the same plant the main shoot of the gametophore bears group of antheridia at its apex and is known as male branch whereas the female branch develops as a side shoot at the base of the male branch phenaria is protandrous as antheridia mature before the archegonia the uh, protandry ensures cross fertilization in the moss plants the female branches usually grow more strenuously to become longer than the male branches so even the uh, antheridia develops or matures early the rhizoids sorry the spermatozoids they do not go and fertilize the eggs of the archegonia of same plant the male reproductive structure or antheridium uh, they are found on the male shoot the male shoot can be easily recognized by orange colored mature antheridia that are born in closely packed clusters on the expanded tip of the leafy antheridiophore antheridia are not sunken in position but project from the surface of antheridiophore antheridial clusters that is heads are surrounded by a rosette of spreading leaves these rosette of spreading leaves are also called as perigonial leaves which are compactly arranged and are larger than the vegetative leaves you can see some of the perigonial leaves in the uh, picture these leaves form a shallow cup like structure known as perigonium they protect the antheridium numerous sterile and erect capitate hairs are intermingled with the antheridia you can see multiple uh, long erect sterile hair like projections in this diagram they are also found in between the antheridia and perigonium leaves the purpose or the function of these leaves are once again protection of the young and developing antheridia these are known as these long structures the these long erect hay like structures are termed as 
paraphyses. Paraphyses are multicellular and consists of a single row of 4 to 6 chlorophyllous cells. You can see elongated hair like cells in this diagram. They are chlorophyllous in nature 4 to 6 cells long. All the cells of paraphyses are elongated and narrow with an exception of the apical cell. It is uh, a large subspherical in shape. Paraphyses helps in moisture conservation, protection, photosynthesis and release of endocytes by building up pressure. Paraphyses are elongated and narrow with an exception of apical cell. It is large and subspherical in shape. Paraphyses also helps in moisture conservation, protection, photosynthesis and release of endocyte during building up pressure. As far as the structure of mature enthridia is concerned, it is club shaped elongated orange colored body which is born on a short multicellular stalk. The body has an outer single layer jacket of polyhedral and flattened cells that contain chloroplasts when the enthridium is very young. The in a LS or in the longitudinal section we can see the tip of a male branch which shows enthridial head and paraphyses which is surrounding these enthridial head. As the enthridium matures the chloroplasts are converted to orange colored chromoplasts. The enthridium wall encloses a dense central mass of numerous small cells called endrocytes. Each endrocytes produce a single biflagellate sperm. The two flagellates are of equal type and they are of whiplash type. The distal end of enthridium form a cap like structure known as operculum. From this operculum the uh, enthrozoids are released. The operculum consists of one or two cells which is distinguished by their larger size, thicker walls and colorless content. These enthridia they dehyce at maturity. The enthridia dehyscence uh, dehyce when they come in contact with water in the form of rain or dew that gets collected in the cup formed by closely arranged perigonial leaves. The enthridia absorb water. This leads to swelling of the inner surface of the outer wall of the operculum cells which becomes mucilaginous. Opercular cells burst as pressure generates within it. An apical aperture is thus formed at the distal end of enthridium. The mass of endrocytes oozes out as slow stream of a viscous fluid. Simultaneous con uh, contraction of enthridial wall and development of hydrostatic pressure within the enthridium also help in the release of endrocytes. Endrocytes spread out in the form of a thin layer. The cell membranes of the endrocytes dissolve in water and biflagellate enthrozoids are liberated. The female reproductive organ in Phenaria is represented by an archegonium. The archegonial branches or archegoniophore arise laterally at the base of the male shoot. The archegonia are born in clusters at the tip of these branches. They are not as distinct as enthridia. The perichaeal leaves surround the cluster of archegonia and they protect them. Paraphyses are also present intermingled with the archegonia. So, you can see in this diagram that at the apex of female branch, the cluster of archegonia they are surrounded by perichaeal leaves and also they are intermingled with elongated 
paraphyses. The apical part of female branch shows several archegonia which are arranged in clusters. The mature archegonium is flask shaped as you can see in this picture. These flask shaped structures are with an elongated neck, a swollen venter at the base and a long columnar massive stalk. So, we can see a massive stalk then above this stalk is found a swollen round venter, above the venter is a long elongated neck which is made up of 4 to 6 uh, cells. If we enlarge one archegonia, the enlarged venter has a two celled layer wall and encloses the cavity which is known as venter cavity. The venter cavity has a large basal egg cell and above the large basal egg cell is found ventral canal cell above it. So, here is the this is the position of an egg cell and just above the egg cell will be found one large ventral canal cell. The elongated neck consists of a row of 6 or more neck cells enclosing a single row of neck canal cells. These neck canal cells they have dense cytoplasm and during the process of fertilization they dissolve and uh, provide a chemotactic pathway to the uh, anthrozoites. Just before fertilization these neck canal cells and venter canal cells they degenerate to form a slimy mucilaginous fluid which absorbs moisture and they swell. So, these uh, swellings, these mucilaginous mounds they act as chemo attractant. They are rich in uh, sugar uh, compounds, they are also rich in amino acids and certain alkaloids and minerals and these mucilage mounts they which are filled and which very rich in chemical compounds they attract the biflagellate anthrozoites. Now, consequently the terminal cells of the archegonial neck are forced apart and even some of the neck cells are thrown off and a free passageway down to the egg is thus formed for the entry of anthrozoites. In Fenaria, fertilization essentially requires water as in other bryophytes. Usually a shallow cup like structure acting as a splash cup is formed by overlapping perigonial bracts surrounding the terminal enthridal cluster. The apical cup holds a thin film of water collected as a result of rain or dew. Operculum, the apical cell of the enthridium absorbs water and bursts making way for the spirally coiled biflagellate anthrozoites to escape from the enthridium. Each anthrozoite is still enclosed within a vesicle. The vesicle dissolves on coming in contact with water and the anthrozoites are set free. Endocytes are then spread out in the form of a thin film on the water surface and eventually move down from the perichial cup to the archegonial cluster situated at a lower level. The raindrop splashes from a height that would also result in anthrozoites falling on the archegonial cluster lower down. The anthrozoid dispersal is also accomplished by small insects. These insects feed on the mucilage exuded by the paraphyses surrounding the sex organs. So, upon reaching the archegonial cluster, the anthrozoites swim towards the archegonia. Entry of these anthrozoites into the archegonium is facilitated by the presence of 
chemotactic substances in the mucilage. All guided anthrozoites enter into the neck of archegonium, but only one of them fuses with the egg nucleus to complete fertilization. After fertilization, a zygote is formed with double set of chromosomes. So, zygote is the first cell of the sporophytic generation. Now, sporophyte in zygo, uh, in case of Phenaria is represented by uh, the zygote. Zygote enlarges and secretes a wall around it. It divides to form an embryo which subsequently leads to formation of a sporophyte. The sporophyte of Phenaria is located at distal end of female branch and is therefore an acrocarpus moss. As far as the structure of uh, sporophyte is concerned, the mature sporophyte is divided into three distinct regions, the foot region, the seta and the capsule. Foot is formed, uh, the foot forms the basal region of the sporophyte. It is a dagger like structure, small conical structure inserted in the tissues of the apical region of leafy archegoniophore. The foot functions as an anchorage of an absorbing organ. The outer wall of epidermal cells in foot have finger like wall ingrowths to increase their surface to volume ratio for absorption of nutrients. These wall ingrowths fuse at their extreme end forming labyrinth containing pockets of cytoplasm. These cells are termed as transfer cells. Similar type of extensive labyrinths is also present in the neighboring gametophytic tissues. Now, CETA is a long cylindrical tough stalk like structure and appears reddish brown in color when dry and mature. Moreover, it is twisted because of which Phenaria derives its name. At maturity, the CETA bends in a characteristic manner and bears the capsule at its tip, lifting it more than an inch above the tip of leafy gametophyte. It is differentiated into an outer epidermis, which is thick walled, uh, uh, which surrounds a thick walled cortex and a central strand of thin walled cells. Epidermis is covered with the cuticle. The central strand acts similar to the primitive type of vascular system. The thick walled cells of cortex provide strength to the slender seta so that it can withstand the weight of the capsule. Seta helps in conduction and provides support to the sporophyte. As far as the capsule is concerned, the capsule in Phenaria is pear shaped. The uh, capsule in Phenaria is highly organized structure. It is initially of green color and subsequently turns yellow and then turns orange. The apex of capsule is covered by a conical hood or a cap known as calyptra. The calyptra is covered by a multi-layered cuticle including layers of analogous to cuticular uh, which is analogous to the cuticular layer, cell wall projections, electron lucent an electron dense cuticle as ob observed in vascular plants also. The calyptra and its associated cuticle represent a unique form of maternal care in embryophytes. This organ has the potential to play a critical role in preventing desiccation of immature sporophyte and thereby may have been essential for the evolution of moss sporophyte. The calyptra falls off at maturity, leaving the capsule bare with the opoculum at its apex. Now, let us understand and uh, discuss the capsule through its internal structure. The capsule of Phenaria show a significant feature. The a significant feature of moss capsule is that fertile tissue is reduced to an archesporium, whereas the sterile tissue includes major part of the capsule such as apophysis, capsule wall, columella, uh, operculum 
and peristome teeth they are all sterile tissues. The moss capsule can be divided into three well marked region. The lowermost apophysis. It is the lowermost region of capsule and is somewhat swollen. It is the photosynthetic portion of the capsule and therefore green in color. It also plays an important role in conduction of water and food materials. It is also called the neck of the capsule. So, the food and water are conducted from the uh, gametophyte through the ceta which is lying below and from this the entire capsule get its water and nutrition. The cross section of apophysis shows that it is covered by epidermis on the outer side. The epidermis is obstructed by stomata which leads to air space below known as the substomatal cavity. So, for the first time we could see the presence of stomata on the sporophyte capsule of phenaria. So, the gametophyte of phenaria is absolutely devoid of any pore, any air pore or any uh, stomata. Uh, for the first time in the life cycle of uh, phenaria, the sporophyte contains uh, stomata. Uh, inner to the epidermis is present a broad spongy region of sterile cells which is rich in chloroplasts with distinct intercellular spaces. This spongy region envelops the central conducting strand which is composed of vertically elongated thin walled narrow cells lacking the chloroplasts. The second uh, portion of the capsule is theca proper. It lies between the apophysis and the opercular region. It is a slightly bent swollen middle region of the capsule. It is the fertile part of the capsule and produces spores. The capsule wall in theca region is several cells thick. The epidermal layer is in continuation with the epidermal layer of apophysis. It contains fewer chloroplasts and is followed by colorless parenchymatous hypodermal layer. Columella is a central cylindrical colorless core of the theca of capsule. It is made up of parenchyma cells. The upper cone shaped end of the columella is connected with the operculum. At the lower constricted end, it is connected with the central stand of apophysis. The columella provides nutrients and water to the development of spore in the spore sac. The columella is surrounded on the outer side by, by an elongated spore sac containing numerous spores. In a longitudinal section of capsule, it reveals that the inner wall of spore sac is only single layered whereas the outer wall is 3 to 4 layered. Each spore mother cell gives rise to 4 haploid spores. Elators are absent in the spore sac of phenaria. A large air space is present on the outer side of the spore sac. It is traversed by delicate strands of elongated green parenchymatous cells known as trabeculae. The trabeculae travels from the innermost layer of the capsule wall to the outer wall of the spore sac and connect both the layers. The third part of the capsule is apical portion. The apical region of the capsule can be differentiated in two important parts that is operculum and peristome. Operculum is an obliquely placed conical cap like terminal region of the capsule and is 4 to 5 layers thick. The inner layers form the major portion of operculum and are composed of small thin walled parenchymatous cells. It is bound by an epidermal surface layer which consists of thick walled cells. Beneath the operculum are present peristome teeth. It consists of two rings of long conical teeth, one within the other and thus are of orthodontist type. 16 teeth are present in each set. The outer set is called as exostome whereas the inner set is termed endostome. The teeth of both the sets are opposite to each other and are on the same radii. 
The conical distal end of the teeth of the outer set merge toward each other and join terminally to form a small central disc of tissue. The peristome teeth are shaped structure uh, to guard the opening of spore sac. They are joined to the base of the of the rim or diagram or diaphragm. The outer set of peristome teeth being hygroscopic respond to the changes in humidity. So, we have seen the uh, sexual reproduction in Finaria at length and also we have discussed the structure of sporophyte in Finaria, the internal structure also of a capsule. So, in our next uh, lecture, we shall discuss and continue our uh, discussion over various groups of archaeconids. Thank you so much.